welcome back to our channel and welcome to Joyce University. This is the part 2 of our video on Magna Carta for public school teachers. And today I'll be discussing the different rights and the privileges of the teachers in the Philippines. Specifically, the public school teachers in the Philippines. Now, I would like to start with section, thir uh, section 13 about teaching hours. The Magna Carta for public school teachers tells us that each teacher should only have six hours of active teaching daily. Meaning the teacher has to teach for six hours a day only and that teacher should not be teaching beyond such. But if the teachers, but because we do not have enough teachers, there is dearth of teachers in our place, then teachers, permanent teachers, are allowed to teach more than eight hours, provided they are supposed to be given additional 25% of their basic pay. Meaning, if this particular month I taught for eight hours, because uh, of the because of the unavailability of the teachers then I should receive what my one month salary of 26,000 because I am a teacher one and other than that I would be should be receiving 25% of that 26,000 that's according to Magna Carta but I don't know if they are doing that in the public school I think hindi naman and the same is true if the teacher is given additional work or a certain task that is outside teaching, then that person has to be given an additional compensation. That is what Section 14 will tell us. If a teacher is given uh, a job, maybe a, a co-curricular activities or maybe out of school activities, and that the teacher has to spend extra time for that, then the teacher has to receive another 25% of the monthly salary. So the Magna Carta tells us that your job really is to teach and that you are supposed to be teaching for six hours a day only but if you are given more than that if you have to do tasks other than teaching and you have to teach more than six hours then additional compensation should be given to these teachers okay I hope that is happening really in the public school now section 15 will be about the criteria for salary now it says there that um, the state should have to make sure that uh, the salaries of the teachers are favorable and are comparable to the other salaries of the other professionals so that okay the teachers would be having higher standards of living and that uh, teachers would be coming up with a more stable financial um, financial status and I think it's good that uh, now, diba, because of the, the trends of the salaries of the public school teachers, ang alam ko yung mga beginning teacher from 18,000, um, meron na silang 26,000 and 2,000 difference dun sa teacher 1, teacher 2, teacher 3. And if the teacher becomes master teacher, there is already a 10,000 difference in the salary. So kung titingnan po talaga natin, uh, malaki na po ang mga sahod ng mga teachers sa public school. And I just wish as well that the government would subsidize to uh, salaries of teachers in the private school because we teachers either in the public or the private are doing the same thing and that is educating the young and I hope that uh, subsidy should also be given to the public school teachers okay now section 17 and 16 will be about the salary scale and equality in the salary scales at the same time and I think it says there that uh, the teachers will be given regular increments after 30 after three years and that there must be a gradual progression from minimum to maximum salary so that uh, the national government teachers would be so that the national government teachers would have um, a, an equal life as that of the other professionals and like what I said a while back I think the government is also prioritizing the salaries of the teachers and the teacher the salaries of the public school teachers are good already compared to and are comparable to other professionals and i think uh teacher salary nowadays is even higher compared to other professionals like nurses like um like nurses or other professionals in the government agencies okay pero hindi pa rin siya sintaas kumpara nung iba all right that's why there must still be uh, something that is to be done for the teacher's salary now 
other privileges was be uh, was be as stated in section 18 there must be cost of living allowance based on the cost of living uh, index and this one i think was given to teachers even before even when i was in uh, the secondary school i was given the color the cost of living allowance and the cost of living allowance will be dependent on where you are teaching or where you are situated if you are in the cities most probably you will be given higher uh, co um a but if you are in the far flung areas you are given lower but i don't know if there are if they still have this because other professionals also have cola okay and that's basically under section 18 section 19 the teacher should also be given special hardship allowances ito yung mga teachers who are situated in far flung areas yung kailangang um kailang tumulay kailangang mag-pass through rivers para makapunta sa school, mag-swim sa mga ilog para makapunta sa school, or mag ng pagkalayo-layo uh, para makapunta sa schools. Or pwede sila yung mga teachers na nandoon sa mga war zones like that of Mindanao, some places in Mindanao. Lahat ng mga teachers that, who experiences hardships while performing the job should be given hardship allowances special hardship allowances and according to magna carta that's another or additional 25 percent of the monthly salary another those who are teaching in multi-grade classes kasi hardship meron din namang hardship don like imagine you are teaching two uh, different year levels in one classroom kapag tapos ka na dito pupunta ka na sa kabila and there's also a lot of hardships and challenges in there they should also be given i believe they should also be given 25 percent additional sa kanilang monthly salary and another section 20 will tell us about salaries to be paid in legal tender cash naman po talaga or ang mga salaries naman na talaga ng mga teachers ay pinupunta sa kanilang atm cards which is um quite okay kasi hindi mo nahawak yung cash mo o kaya i I centralized na siya, medyo centralized na siya, but section 11 would tell us that deductions should be prohibited. Okay, deductions must be prohibited, really, especially those that are uh, deducting something na hindi naman authorized, o kaya yung mga banko na nagdededuct na hindi naman authorized, hindi po prohibited yun based on the Magna Carta. And another, section 22, will be about medical examination and treatment. And I think ginagawa ito yearly ng mga public school teachers. Every year, they have to sub subject themselves to uh, medical examination. According to Magna Carta, your medical examination and treatment should be free. Okay? And it could be reimbursed. Pero, I already talked to a lot of public school teachers, ang kanilang medical expenses ay hindi naman na reimburse kahit kailan ng nala, hindi naman sila binabayaran ng Department of Education for that. So, this one should also be amended. Okay? Section 23 would be about compensation for injuries, specifically the compensable occupational disease. Lahat ng mga sakit dapat ng mga teachers na nakuha nila while performing the task should be compensated compensated like na aksidente habang nagtuturo must be compensated nagkaroon ng sakit sa lalamunan must be compensated but uh, like what i said these compensations are not given to public school teachers next another right and privilege given to public school teachers ay yung study leave na tinatawag natin lahat ng mga nasa public schools according to the magna carta are eligible to have their study leave provided they are already in the service for seven years and that they have to study uh, but that study should not exceed one school year pero pag nag exit na po ng one school year uh, naging another year ka na, na nag-aaral is still you are given a uh, 60 percent of the monthly salary all right but uh, ngayon po, ngayon po napakasarap ng mag-aral, hindi lang mga teachers sa public school, maging teachers sa private school because there are already a lot of scholarships given to to these people uh, so long as they are qualified and so long as they really applied for it, then they could get a lot of scholarships na pwedeng mag-finance ng kanilang uh, further studies or ng kanilang seminars for that matter. 
and indefinite leave in Section 25 ay binibigay din sa ating mga teachers. And this indefinite leave, kaya sa tinawag na indefinite kasi hindi alam kung kailan babalik. Okay, yung indefinite leave nila would depend on the illness that the teacher has uh, is going through. Okay, at yung at yung indefinite leave na yun, for, for instance, uh, nagkaroon ka ng sakit sa lalamunan, at hindi mo kayang magturo ng isang taon or hindi mo alam kung hanggang kailan ka pwede, then you could file for an indefinite leave. Okay? And at the same time, there must be a salary increase upon retirement. This is not what I am... I am not so sure of the of the salary increase upon retirement. Ang alam ko lang, nakakompute na yun. Uh, pwedeng lump sum or pwedeng monthly depending on the desire of the teacher. If the teacher would want to get everything at once, it's uh, okay lang. Pero pag gusto niya kukuha ng content, then they would be coming up with a monthly benefit later on, it's okay. That depends on the decision of the teacher. The next one would be about <clears throat> the right of the teacher to organize or the right of the teacher to establish a certain organization that protects the right and to join an organization that protects his right okay lang po you on and um, the teacher also has the freedom to organize a movement that would defend the interests of the majority of the teachers okay lang siya all right the teachers are not um blocked from joining organizations or establishing organizations that are essential in protecting the rights and the interests of the teachers okay and the section 28 will tell us that the that the teacher should not be discriminated in any manner provided yung mga sinasalihan niyang organization does not prevent him or her from carrying out his duties and does not have in any manner adverse effect to the students uh who Oh, of the students that the teacher is teaching. Section 29 will be about the National Teachers Organization. The teacher has a right to join organizations like this to protect and to, um, yeah, to protect the rights and the standards of the teaching profession as well as to craft policies that would, in one way or another, protect students' welfare. Right? And these are all the rights and the privileges given to teachers as mandated by the Magna Carta for Public School Teachers or RA 4670. I hope you have learned something from this. Next video would be about Republic Act 10533. Okay? Goodbye. See you next time.